and it was cold. But both teams were fired up to play each other. Tartan in 5A, Brandon Lockhart to Dorian Singer, 65-yard touchdown, and they go on top of the 4A Simley Spartans. And it's Simley, first quarter Tartan QB, Brandon Lockhart lets one fly. Perfect pass and 64 yards to Dorian Singer. Tartan on top 7-0 early. 7-0, Brock Bertelson, sack and a loss. Tartan's defense does the job. Already trailing seven zips, Simley makes a special teams mistake. The snap over punter slash quarterback Shane Preferrell's head gives Tartan the ball inside the tent. Fourth and goal, but Simley stuffs him. Nolan Wanzik and Travis Doman to end the drive. Jamonte Franklin, the nice catch, but he's decleated by Lay Keita of Tartan. Watch it again. Wow. Second quarter. Maybe the cold weather brings out the sound defense. How about this stick by Tartan's Lake Kaida? Textbook stuff. Then in the second, Simley's turn. Big Victor Brooks completely stalls a Tartan possession with this hit. Tian Dang, a 14-yard gain. And then Jalen Washington will pick up a 13-yard gain as the Titans are marching down the field and the drive would finish with a Washington touchdown. 13 to nothing in favor of Tartan. Minute and a half left in the first half. Shane Prefel back to pass. Austin Studler, the sack. Big play. Prefel back to pass again. Sacked again. Xavier Hudson. Randy Kamanye. 13 nothing halftime Tartan. Third quarter. Lockhart to Dorian Singer. Six yard line is where he ends up. It sets up Lockhart to Kamanye for a nine yard score and Tartan leads 19 to nothing. 13 nothing at halftime. Then in the third, Lockhart hooking up with a big fella, Randy Cumone for the touchdown. Tartan builds a 19 nothing lead. Picked off by Chris Pugh, returns it to the Tartan 15 yard line. It's a big play for Simley and it sets up their only touchdown of the game. Simley answers in the third, Preferral steps up in the pocket, buying some time and a good look. Finds wide open Nolan Wanzik. That score would be the only one for the game for Sparty. Prefull to Nolan Wanzek to make it 19 to seven. Fourth quarter, Garrett Kieserk with a field goal made from 42 yards. In the win, no less, 42 yards, 22-7 Tartan. Prefull scrambling, Singer with the interception off the tip, big play, and then Kierzyk would kick another field goal to make it 25 to seven, and that's how it ends. For the first time since 1990, the Tartan Titans are seven and zero. We was prepared. We came prepared. We spent like three days school, and then it was like hot days, I think, throughout the week. And then we come in this game is snowing, so we, I mean, we knew it was gonna be snowing, so we just we was prepared, and then like, especially if we knew uh, there was six and all, and we was too, so we had to come in and then with the right mindset, and then fortunately we pick up a win, and then we very excited already, and we grabbed the conference championship. Pretty exciting. Pretty exciting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we knew it was gonna be a big game. We talked to the kids about obviously prepping for the postseason with a game like this and a game of this magnitude. It was for a, a section championship. They worked hard all week. They set a goal and they overcame some adversity at times and certainly wasn't perfect, but couldn't be more proud of the kids and the coaching staff and everybody involved tonight. It's our house. It's our house. Come on. First quarter, Champlin Park strikes first. Look at that catch. One handed by Brock Johnson. Then he's off to the races. 64 yards for the touchdown and a 6 nothing Champlin Park lead. Through a tough time with cancer. How about Jace Miller tonight? Great catch, Brock Johnson. That was a one-handed grab. Turns on the Jets. Huge touchdown, 63 yards, and Champlin Park's up 6 nothing. But Deeswin Cooper would score for Totino. They add the extra point. They lead 7-6, but Jace Miller had a monster night. And Champlin Park scored late in the game. Score into the fourth quarter. Big stop here. Totino Grace driving, but Champlin Park's defense holds at fourth down on the 20. A huge play. This one huger. Jace Miller with a heck of a throw. Johnson with another heck of a catch at the one with three minutes left. Three plays later on third and goal. Miller finishes it off himself, going over the top for the game-winning touchdown. And Champlin Park wins it 12 
seven. He was covered at first, so I rolled out and just threw it up, and I knew Brock could make the play. He's done that all year, all practice. I, knew, I trust him in that moment. You know, we had our chances earlier in the game and just didn't execute, and we just told the kids to stick with it, do the little things, and the second half we, uh, you know, got that last score. Mounds View Eastridge, just a crazy football game. A blocked field goal by Eastridge keeps Mounds View off the board, but Mounds View would rally to tie the game. Cole Stenstrom to Jack Rober, 66-yard touchdown strike to tie it at 28. This game went back and forth in the fourth quarter. Nice run here by K.J. Moore, their outstanding athlete for the Raptors. They go on to win 41-40 over Moundsview. Maple Grove at Anoka tonight. Nathan Ross on the punt return for the Crimson. He's going to take this down the sidelines, 51 yards for the touchdown to put Maple Grove ahead 28 to nothing. A little bit later in the third quarter, Cooper Weigshed would score from six yards out and Maple Grove with a nice win. Final score, 35 to nothing. And yes, there was no Minnesota made. South did not seem bothered by the elements. In fact, they thrived. Here he goes. Johnny Shabazz gets some space through the line and he's gone. He hits his stride and so too does his team. They just kept the heat on on a cold night. Reed Patterson goes outside. That's six more. Lakeville South wins it tonight, 61 to six. Lakeville South's Garrett Savard got him off and running. 49 yard touchdown run to make it a Lakeville South lead they would not relinquish. Riley Haglin had a big night. This uh, touchdown run coming up covers 29 yards. Johnny Shabazz added a couple of TDs. Lakeville South rolls 61 to six. The final. Lakeville North rebounds. They beat White Bear Lake. Tommy Hartwell to Keaton Mose for White Bear. Right there. But North's uh, Logan Freeberg would add a, a touchdown run here for North. And they go on to win 23 7. So Lakeville North is now 6 and 1. How about in Centennial tonight? Centennial Cougars upset number three, St. Michael Albertville. Only touchdown of the game right here. Connor Zulk, a 63-yard touchdown run to put Centennial ahead, seven to nothing. Their defense did the rest. Broken up in the end zone on fourth down. Great defensive play. Final score, seven nothing, the final. Put on the snowmobile suit as they took on Hopkins tonight. How about this, Demetrius Patton interception for a touchdown for the Royals to put them on top six to nothing. The Cardinals come back though. David Giebley. This is going to be a 60 yard touchdown run as he clears the seam and he's going to outrun the defense with the point after it's seven six Cardinals and then seconds left in the half Jordan Doe with a three yard TD run but Hopkins rallies to win. 20 to 19 was the final. River Elks, they're 7 and 0 now. The inside handoff to Joe Nordstrom against Monticello, 29 yards and a touchdown. They led 12-6 at this point. Later, Zach Stro, the quarterback, keeps the ball, takes it 17 yards for the touchdown, and Elk River with a, a big win. Watch Cody Newhouse. This is their big defensive lineman that. Uh, there, Steve Johnson really thinks is a really good player. Knocks the ball loose. They recover the fumble. It's a big win for Elk River tonight in the North Central Blue. They knocked off Monticello 40 to 20 was the final. Joe Dayock, the quarterback. It's a nine yard keeper right up the middle and it's seven nothing cadets. Then Danny McFadden short yardage to make it 14 zero. Later in the second, it's McFadden again. It's St. Thomas Academy rolling tonight in the Suburban. They win 40 to three. They're now seven and zero. Brock Edwards is a sophomore, 5'9 and 233 pounds with some speed. That means he can do this. Low to the ground he goes. He's hard to deal with. That set up a touchdown by one of his teammates, quarterback Carter Hansen on the sneak. Jefferson needed it. They beat Henry Sibley just barely 12 to seven. Hopkins at the uh, Blake Middle School. Jalen Suggs, the quarterback, short sneak to give SMB a lead in the third quarter at 13 to three, that's all. Then Sanjay Red 
would score on this touchdown run here in the fourth. The final was only 20 to three, but SMB survives with a victory over Mound West Tonka. There's the final, and we'll be right back. The Minneapolis North has a running back named Terrence Kamara, and this guy is really good. He's played quarterback in this game against Highland Park, 47 yard touchdown run right here. And then watch him again. This is a 40 yard keeper. The transfer from Champlin Park has really made a difference for the Polars. They're seven and zero, and they beat Highland tonight big, 60 to nothing. The final. Prudley took a big lead on St. Croix and just maintained. The Tigers jumped to a 49 nothing deficit at the halftime, and then they just kind of kept running the ball. They had to put this one on running time. They went on to beat St. Croix Lutheran 49 nothing in the final. Robbinsdale Cooper has a young and talented team tonight against Irondale. Watch Isaiah Sanders by time. Finally finds Rashawn Keaton for six. That's patience. Irondale had a pretty good score as well. Griffin Barasa to Owen Lau just in. Cooper just barely. They beat Irondale 28 to 23. Benilde St. Margaret's kept the ball on the ground against Park Center in the snow. They just ground it out after taking a big lead. BSM is very good. Luke Ferdeen with some second half yardage. That's what they did. That's all they had to do. Benilde wins big 42 to 6. Chan Hassett, Armstrong, the Falcons are unbeaten and still unbeaten. They started strong and the night put on another clinic. Caleb Jones to the one yard line. He just keeps going, does everything but score. He sets one up though. Armstrong. This is what they do to you. They go outside, they go inside. They did both tonight. They've also got a talented quarterback by the name of Jake Breitbach. Calls his number. It worked. So did Armstrong. All night they beat Chan Hassan and made a statement 34 to nothing. TK Marshall, who's going Division I to North Dakota State. This is TK right here against uh, Johnson tonight. Southwest up 7-0 with that TD run. Here's Marshall again off the pitch. Great blocking. Watch him turn it on for a nice touchdown run right there. And then this one, this one I love. This is a 63-yard touchdown run. So what did TK Marshall do tonight? 25 carries, 310 yards, and five touchdowns as Minneapolis Southwest goes to 6-1. And guess who they get on Wednesday night? Undefeated Fridley at Fridley. Winona on the road against Mayo. Jackson Nibbling rolls out the pass. Austin Malanchuk, 70-yard touchdown. Windhawks up 14-0. Later in the second, quarterback does it again. This time on the ground, slicing the defense. Hey, Winona, Windhawks are now 7-0, 35-0 final. Faribault facing Rochester JM, and it's all Rockets in this one. Forrest Wolf will power his way in for six to give the Rockets a 20 to nothing lead. Later, Braden Black punching it in for a short score, and John Marshall in the Big Southeast with a victory tonight. We check the scores, 35 nothing the final in that one. Jumping to the fourth quarter, Spartans up 12-6. Brainer trying to drive with minutes to go. Nate Staling rolls left, finds Simon Foss for the big game past midfield. A few plays later, Staling going to the air again. This time he hits Josh McLean, comes up with the big gain, and Brainerd's inside to the 30. Nine seconds left, third and 25 from the 25. Staling looking for the end zone, heaves it up there, but his recorey is Ethan Anderson, the only one in that zip code. He gets the game-winning pick, and Brainerd falls just short with a 12-6 margin. Starting things off in the first quarter, Piers gets it to their best playmaker, Matthias Algorin. He gets to the outside, and no one is going to catch him once he's in the open field. Piers goes up 7 to nothing. In the second quarter, same score. Same guy running the ball as well. This time, Algorin breaks a few tackles. Nice moves. That's why he's getting D1 looks. No one catches him once again. Piers would go on to cruise in this one. They take it 51 to 7.